the victim olympics has begun in a world where victimhood has become a coveted currency where does personal responsibility end and the quest for sympathy begin unfortunately playing victims has become a common strategy in today's society fueled by a culture of validation and the amplification of personal narratives I've seen many individuals who seek to capitalize on their victim status as a means of garnering attention and support, oftentimes exaggerating or fabricating their own experiences to evoke sympathy. One of the main motivations behind playing victims is the desire for validation and affirmation. In today's connected world, social media platforms serve as a stage where people can showcase their grievances and seek sympathy from a wide audience. This quest for validation a lot of times drives people to construct narratives that portray themselves as perpetual victims, feeding into a cycle of seeking external validation and reinforcing a victim identity. The culture of playing victims not only perpetuates a cycle of disempowerment, but also undermines personal growth and resilience. By positioning oneself as a perpetual victim, people become trapped in a mindset of this powerlessness, attributing their struggles solely to external factors and relinquishing their personal agency. This mindset hinders personal development as individuals fail to recognize their own capacity for overcoming adversity and taking control of their own lives. I personally always believed it was a case to take ownership of my own actions and responsibilities, regardless of the color of my skin or what people with the same skin color as me told me I should believe in. Unfortunately, playing victim is seen as a good thing in today's society, as if it's a badge of honor that you wear around proudly. <laughs> this is the dark side of victimhood and how it can hinder personal growth and success. And I really want you guys to watch these eye-opening videos that explore the consequences of embracing victimhood and why it's crucial to strive for victory instead. Teaching people that they're victims is so incredibly damaging and so incredibly dangerous. They did an experiment with a group of women yeah. and they put scars on their faces and yeah. they told these women that they're going into a job interview and the purpose of the experiment is to find out whether people with visual, uh, facial disfigurements face discrimination. Uh, they showed them the scars in the mirror, and as they led them out of the room, they said, we're just going to touch it up a little bit. And as they touched it up, they removed the scarring completely. So the women went into the job interview thinking that they are scarred, but actually being their normal selves. And the result of the experiment is that those women then came back reporting massively increased level of discrimination. Many of them came back with comments that the interviewer had made that they felt were referencing their facial disfigurements. And this is why I think this ideology of victimhood is so dangerous, because if you preach to people constantly that we're all oppressed, then that primes people to look for that. So listen, we need to make it good for the call this soon. Take your back back off. I'm going to have to put your hands the back. Okay. I cannot believe this is okay, happening. Right now. This is a mm -hmm. warning. Ma'am, don't steal the sign. You can't steal the sign. You're on camera stealing a sign. Oh, yeah. Sam! Officers, he's stealing a sign. Don't throw it over. Don't do that. Don't do that. Steal a sign. I just moved it. You just did what? I just moved it. You just moved it? But you took it. Okay. Who was holding it? Me. She just ripped it out of my camera. She just ripped it out of my hand. She just ripped it out of your hand? Yes. Why'd you rip it out of his hand? Because this was just woman's life. Would you get off her sign, please? On college campus. Okay. Can Where I go? A, can you get off a sign for your damaged property? Okay. I can't believe y'all protect nope. that. You're not going anywhere. Right now you're being detained. Okay. Detained for what? Uh, larceny. You stole his sign. He has it back. Okay. Yeah, I because I got 50, it from you. I moved it 50 yards. I don't care if you moved it one foot. You don't have a right to take someone's property. Okay? Period. I don't care what the circumstance is. You don't have a right to take anyone's property. He was holding it, therefore it was his. And you took it. Okay? I know you may not agree with what's being said, but you don't have a right to take someone's property. Period. Okay? One, six, seven, one, six. Look, sir, I'm not trying to get arrested. I just don't agree with this. Do you have anything on you? Am I being arrested right now? Okay, why not you need to 
Oh, uh, I'm not trying to protect me, man, but I do have to enforce the law, okay? That's just how it is. Alright. Do you see us being subjected to this shit? Okay, well, this is a public place, okay? They have a right to do this. If you don't like their views, you can go away. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to be here. They're here because they want us to watch them. Okay, well, then you can ignore them. If you ignore them, that takes away their power. It's just that simple. Okay? It doesn't matter how much you ignore them. They're going to come back. And they're going to come back again. And this is why women have such a problem getting abortions in um, North Carolina. Okay. And y'all just let them get away with this shit. Okay. okay. All right. I cannot believe y'all let this happen. You admitted to taking a sign. Well, all I did was I just walked it over here. I was going to give it back okay, to him. Well, I, I don't just, know that, man. He, I didn't know that. I came over here and then you rested against the sign. So listen, we need to make this difficult and call the scene. Take your back back off. Turn around and put your hands on your back. I cannot believe this okay, is happening. Right now I'm asking you that. Is there something else that I can do? No. I just told you you're under arrest. I cannot unarrest you. And the judicial system must do that. That's why we're going to go to the Right? You put your hands together. There we are. The sad thing is, in today's society, the culture of playing victims can have detrimental effects on interpersonal relationships and social cohesion. When victimhood becomes a competitive endeavor that people for some reason want to strive for, people engage in a race to claim the highest level of victimhood in today's day and age, disregarding the experience and struggles of others, as individuals become way more focused on their own victim status, rather than fostering genuine connections and supporting one another. Jussie Smollett's case serves as a prime example of how playing the victim can attract widespread attention on social media. He cast himself as victim, but today Jussie Smollett became the accused, charged with staging a racist, homophobic attack on himself. When Smollett claimed to be the victim of a hate crime, his story quickly went viral, capturing the attention of millions across social media platforms. These social media platforms became platforms for outrage, sympathy and support. However, as the truth unfolded and inconsistencies emerged, it became very clear that Smollett's narratives was not as it seemed. And funnily enough, as the investigations progressed, doubts began to emerge regarding the veracity of his claims, with us now having video footage of his paid actors who tell the whole story of his lie. They took our beautiful bench. <laughs> this is where we waited for Jussie to come before we attacked them. So we got here with 10 minutes to spare, and we had to plan our escape route to survey the land. His building is actually right here right above the stairs that we're going to attack them at. We made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. On the dot. On the dot. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones. He said, so we don't lose them. I don't know if that's really the reason, but you can deduce your own reason. So 2 a.m., he was nowhere to be found. He was not there. So we were like, damn, what do we do? We didn't have no way of contacting him. He had no way of contacting us. So we waited here for about, what, four, four minutes? It was about four, four, minutes, four minutes, but it felt like forever. Because it was cold as balls. So I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I was like, OK, that's him. Let's go. We got to go get this empire. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Is that him? That's that neck. It's that neck. Yeah, that neck. As we crossed the street, we said hey to get his attention. Hey, Nick. Hey. He turned around, looked at us, and that's when we started yelling uh, the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. Hey. Aren't you that empire hey, Nick. Empire fat Nick. It's MAGA country. Yeah. And then he said, what did you say to me? And then that's when I threw the first punch at him. I held the blow, because I didn't want to hurt him, of course. So I made it look real, but I held it. He wanted it to look like he fought back. That was very important for him, because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. So we did that. 
and then I threw him to the ground. And while after I threw him to the ground, I he had no bruise. I wanted it to look more real. So then I threw him to the ground. After I threw him to the ground, I used my knuckle and gave him a noogie. So I went like this. Why did I do that? To give him a scar, to give him a mark, to make it look real, like he really did get his ass beat. After I did that, I fake kicked him. I don't know what he was doing. I wasn't paying attention. That's where I came around with the bleach, the infamous bleach in the hot sauce bottle, poured it on his shirt. Then I finally put the rope around his face. I did not put it around his neck. I just placed it on his face, and that's when we took off. Another one being Amber Heard. Amber Heard's portrayal of a victim in her highly publicized legal battle with Johnny Depp captured the attention of millions across social media platforms. Through her allegations of domestic abuse, she didn't only gain sympathy, but also became a symbol of strength for survivors. Social media platforms served as a battleground of opinions where supporters rallied behind her, emphasizing the importance of believing and supporting survivors. Hashtag I believe Amber Heard trended, <laughs> generating a groundswell of support and reinforcing the notion that victims should be heard and validated. The power of social media and amplifying Heard's narrative cannot be understated as news spread rapidly through tweets, shares, and posts. Of course, society's perception of the case was heavily influenced by the emotional support and personal testimony shared on these platforms. Social media became a space where individuals could express outrage call for justice and share their own experiences with abuse, solidifying Heard's victimhood in the public consciousness. However, as the legal proceedings unfolded, a more complex picture began to emerge. Counter allegations and evidence presented by Johnny Depp's legal team raised doubts about the authenticity of Heard's claims. And details of her relationships and mutual accusations surfaced, and social media became a battleground divided between those steadfast in their support of Heard and those questioning her credibility like myself. And of course, in the end, she did lose and it confirmed the truth of what I previously witnessed. Mm -hmm. The consequences of playing victims extend beyond individual behavior and impact societal attitudes as a whole. The overemphasis on victimhood can lead to a distorted perception of reality where genuine societal problems and systematic injustices are overshadowed by selfish personal narratives. This attracts attention and resources from addressing the root causes of social issues as the focus shifts towards validating personal victimhood instead of working towards collective solutions and progress. To break free from the culture of playing victims, it is crucial to promote a culture of personal responsibility and resilience. We need to encourage individuals to take ownership of their experiences, reflect on their own actions, and embrace a growth mindset that can foster personal development and empower individuals to truly overcome adversity. Of course, having empathy and understanding towards other experiences can contribute to a more compassionate and cohesive society where individuals support each other's struggles rather than competing for victim status. This culture of playing victims that we have created can contribute and has contributed to the toxic environment of blame and resentment. They become very quick to point fingers and assign blame to others, perpetuating a cycle of conflict and division. This mindset inhibits open dialogue, problem solving and reconciliation. It is vital that we must promote a culture that encourages constructive engagement and finding common ground rather than fostering a victim mentality. This victim Olympics that for some reason everyone wants to play in has brought about trivializing genuine instances of oppression and discrimination. When victimhood becomes a commodity, it can undermine the struggles and experiences of those who truly do face victimization and for us to go against the culture of playing victims we truly must actively promote narratives of empowerment and agency by celebrating stories of individuals who have overcome adversity we inspire many others to believe in their own potential and strive for positive change it's essential to uplift and amplify voices that emphasize resilience strength and the capacity for transformation, reminding individuals that they have the power to shape their own lives and contribute to a better world. And to the people watching, the pervasive culture of playing victims has led us down a crazy path, hindering our collective potential and impeding progress. The time has come for us to break free from this cycle of disempowerment and take ownership of our own lives and our society. We must recognize that true strength lies not in claiming victimhood, but embracing resilience and personal responsibility. By fostering empathy, supporting one another, and actively engaging in collective action, we can forge a new narrative, one that celebrates growth, unity, and boundless possibilities of us as humans and our potential. And I truly, I 
truly want us to rise above the limitations of victimhood and chart towards a future where empowerment and success know no bounds. Together, we can transcend the confines of the victim Olympics and build a society that thrives on compassion, understanding, and unwavering belief in our ability to overcome. Yeah.